What is up CG fans, this video is going to be more of a workflow tutorial expecting that you already have an intermediate knowledge of Blender so I will not be going in depth on every little thing. I will however be overviewing everything including the textures and compositing as well as slowing down for any useful tips and tricks so make sure to watch till the end of the video. If you can't wait to learn how I made this keyboard feel free to subscribe, like the video and hit the bell for more quality videos just like this one. Enough said, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so before I start time lapsing some footage, I'm going to show you how I set up the reference image. So for my reference, I use the Razer Ornata Chroma keyboard. So you'll be able to download the image for that in the description below. So first I'm going to quickly delete the default cube and I'm going to go, oh, before I add it, I'm going to go 7. Uh, click 7 on the keyboard so I can see the top view. I'm going to go shift A and just add a background image. So I'm going to go put in the image here and load it. There we go. So first I'm going to model the frame. So as you can see I add a plane and size it according to the reference image. I then pull the vertices down and extrude the second half of the frame. I then rename it because it's always good to rename your objects. Here I separate the two parts with P and then I fill in the missing faces. Right, so now I'm going to show you how I modeled the keycaps. So we're going to go to the top view again. And this is a pretty similar process to what I did before. So I add in a plane, scale it down, and position it over a key. So I'm going to scale it in some more, and I'm just going to get the proportions right. Okay, here we go. Alright, now, so if you have a look, you can see. This front part comes out more than the back, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit E to extrude and scale. So you can see this pretty well matches up down here, so we can leave that as it is. And then we'll just select these two vertices and I'm going to pull it down. Right there is about fine. Okay, so now I'm going to select the four outer vertices and I'm going to go into the camera view and just uh, drag it down. So the Razer Ornata Chroma, the keycap's actually half sized but I'm going for a more general look so I'm going to make it a more fill sort of keycap. We can adjust this later. You can adjust it to whatever you want. Okay, so now we're going to bevel it, so uh, the top face, we're actually going to have it curving inwards, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the edges, and I'm going to hit Ctrl E and Edge Bevel Weight, so now we can add a bevel modifier, and what this means is that, uh, I'll just uh, set this up, add some segments, And I'll just drag this so I can see it. I'm holding shift so uh, I can adjust this easier. And it's looking pretty good. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, we've got the edge bevel on here so that when we curve this inwards, it won't be affected by the bevel modifier. Uh, and for that to happen, we got to click wait. Okay, so the Razer Ornata Chroma, it's it's pretty rounded on the corners, so it's it's more than this. It's probably like that-ish. And I'll just uh, shade this smooth. So again, I'm going for a more general look, so I'm going to lower it. But you can um, change it to whatever floats your boat. Okay, so that's looking good. So now I'm going to round the top. So I'm going to subdivide this top face like that. That's all we need. And then I'm going to select this uh, vertice 
and I'm going to turn on proportional editing and I'm going to hit G, Z, I'm going to scroll in and now as you can see I can just drag it down like that and there we go so that's the keycap made now if you have a look the real keycaps they're actually hollow um, because the switch is there but we're not going to model that because you won't be able to see it so uh, this is just fine for our keycap so here I am just duplicating the keys and positioning them you could use an array modifier for this if you want but I thought it was easier to just get started for the big keys I scaled them on the X axis and then I used orthographic view to reposition the two top sides it's the exact same process for the vertical keys I just scaled them on the Y axis instead I then beveled the frame edges by giving them an edge weight followed by a bevel modifier and I played around with the settings of it make sure you set it to weight so the edge weight actually applies to create the cutouts I added a plane and then in edit mode I added more planes and scaled them to fit all of the keys so I'm just duplicating them here and uh, scaling it duplicating it some more and to create the little arrow pad I just add two edge loops with ctrl R and extrude it I then extrude it down through the frame and I add a boolean modifier set to difference to subtract the holes I then enable auto smooth and I lower the keycaps so it's uh, you can't see the gap Before I create the wrist rest, I bring the front edge down a bit. I then duplicate the top face and separate it with P. And then I extrude it out and add some edge loops. And then I position the edge loops to roughly resemble a curve. I then add another one around the middle and add a subdivision surface modifier and add some edge loops to tighten it. To create the panel of buttons I add a circle and scale it down, I then expand it along the X axis and then fill it, I then extrude it up, insert it and extrude it down again. To create the actual buttons I add a cylinder and scale it down, I then delete the top face and grid fill it, I play with the settings a little bit and then I use proportional editing to select the middle vertice and bring it down I then proceed to duplicate it and change the height for two of them I then apply smooth shading for the buttons and the button holder to create the cutout for the cable I added a cylinder rotated it at 90 degrees and then scaled it down and then I expanded it on the Z axis and positioned it and then I scaled it along the X and applied a boolean set to difference I then added a subdivision surface modifier and shaded it smooth for the actual cable itself I added a bezier curve and then I positioned the vertices how, to how I wanted the cable to look uh, I then extruded it to make the cable a bit longer and then I played around with the settings to give it some thickness and to make it more smooth for the final render I then played around with the curve for a bit more the last modeling step was cleaning up the mesh and just looking around for any problems so I'm now going to overview the textures so for the wrist rest material it's mainly composed of the uh, sweat patches and dust as well as the bump so for the sweat patches I just use two boronoi textures and mix them together and then for the dust I got the node set up from render rides so I will leave 
a link to his tutorial in the description. So I mix that together um, and then on the principled BSDF I upped the subsurface. This is very important if you're a beginner and still following along. This is what makes it look uh, soft. The texture for the keycaps is once again made up of sweat patches and dust. So I used a Voronoi texture again. I used another one for the bump and then I mixed the sweat patches with the dust. And then I also upped the specular to give it that shiny look on the top. The frame material once again had a dust setup but this time it was mixed with a noise texture for the bump and roughness instead. The cable texture was very simple with a base color of black. I slightly upped the subsurface and upped the roughness quite a bit. Lastly, the buttons were the same texture as the keycaps except for the emission, which was uh, again a very simple setup. I just uh, got a red base color and obviously a red emission color. For the lighting I used a pretty simple setup with an HDRI that I got from HDRI Haven so I'll have a link to the website in the description and then I used two area lamps to simulate a monitor screen so it's this one and a light bulb so to get it looking uh, realistic for the color I used a black body node with the appropriate Kelvin scale temperature. So 6500 for the monitor screen and 3500 for the light bulb. As far as compositing goes, it was also a fairly simple setup. I just put in a hue saturation node and tweaked it a little bit and then some lens distortion as well as a vignette and then I added a bright contrast node. So there you have it, that is how I created this keyboard in Blender. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more be sure to drop a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.